Okay, so we talked earlier about why it's um, important never to divide by zero. Um, you know, you could take two and divide it by um, three, that would be fine. You could take four and divide it by nine. You can take five and divide it by three. You can even take zero and divide it by a number. Um, so zero divided by five, that would be equal to zero. But what you can never, never, never do is take a number and divide it by zero. Because every time you divide a number by zero, a fairy falls down dead. Some functions um, are safer than other functions for fairies. So constant functions, for example, um, our fairy can travel along the number line at the constant function f of x equals one, and she's perfectly safe. Linear functions, f of x equals x. Um, the graph is a nice straight line, slope of one, and the fairy is safe. Quadratic functions, um, f of x equals x squared. The fairy has a curve, so she slips around a little bit, but she can still get from one side to the other and be safe. Uh, our cubic functions, x cubed, they make a squiggle, so she'll get to go for a little bump in the road here on her ride, but um, again, she can go the whole way across and be fine. Absolute value functions, these are kind of slippery, so she whoosh, she slides down, and then she goes back up, but no danger zones. Square root functions, these, um, they start here at zero, but once she gets a good foothold, she can just zoom right along into positive infinity. But once we get to f of x equals one over x, this is a rational function. Rational functions have variables in the denominator, and these are a very serious threat to fairies, because anytime x in the denominator causes the denominator to equal zero, a fairy could fall down dead. So this fairy has to be very careful where she goes on the graph. And in order to keep her safe, the um, asymptote fairies come and they put up barriers or warnings um, so that the fairy knows where she can go to draw the line. So here is a vertical asymptote um, right here and going the other direction, here is a horizontal asymptote. And you can tell where the asymptotes are because they guide the graph. So when the fairy comes from negative infinity along the curve, as she gets closer to zero, she has to go down to negative infinity on the y-axis to avoid touching zero. She's going to get closer and closer and closer to it, but she's never actually going to touch or cross that line um, where it would be causing her to divide by zero. If she started over here at positive infinity and headed toward negative infinity, right, she's going to get closer and closer and closer to zero, but then as she gets to that warning um, at the asymptote, she shoots herself up to positive infinity, and it causes this break in the graph. If you notice, all of our other parent function graphs, they were um, continuous from their starting point on, um, or they went from negative infinity to positive infinity, and so on. Um, but the rational functions, these, it, it's like the whole graph has been chopped into pieces. There are different things that you can do to your rational functions to change the location of the asymptotes. So if I take my rational function and I'm going to put parentheses around it, and I'm going to add 3 to the whole function. So I have my rational function plus 3. Um, this transformation is going to shift the whole graph up 3 units. So I'm going to click OK and look at what happened. The, um, the graph just shifted up 1, 2, 3, which means the horizontal asymptote also shifted up 3 units. So now my horizontal asymptote is this line at y equals 3. 
but moving the graph up did not change the vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote is still here at, um, at 0, x equals 0, because if I were to divide by 0, then that would cause a problem for the graph. Um, if instead of adding 3 outside the parentheses, I'm going to take 1 and divide it by the quantity x plus 3 inside the parentheses. So now I'm going to add 3 directly to the x. This should move my graph um, 3 units to the left of 0, 0. So I had started here at 0, 0, and now sure enough my graph has bopped over 1, 2, 3 units to the left. Um, now this time my horizontal asymptote didn't change. It's still 0, um, so it's guiding the graph there. But my vertical asymptote now has shifted from um, the line x e or y equals 0 uh, over here to, let's see, 1, 2, 3. So now we're here at x equals 3. There's my vertical asymptote um, at x equals 3. If I want to stretch my graph, then I might multiply by a constant instead. So let's try 4 divided by x and see what happens to the picture. Okay, notice before the parent graph, it was hugging the x-axis and the y-axis a lot more tightly, and it passed through the point 1, 1. Now when I multiply um, the rational function by a constant greater than 1, um, 4, now my graph is passing through the point 2, 2. As I increase that number, so let's make it, say, 8. Okay, now notice it's widened the space between as well. So now um, my curve is up here passing through, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, comma, 2. Um, so the, the more I increase this numerator, um, then the, the wider apart my two curves become. If I multiply by a number in the denominator instead. So let's put this in parentheses and we'll do a 4x in the denominator. And look at what happens to the graph. Now the opposite thing um, has occurred. Instead of stretching the two curves further apart, now we're bringing them closer together. Um, but notice that when I multiplied uh, by a number greater than 1 or by um, a fraction between 0 and 1, in both cases, my asymptote stayed exactly the same. I ended up with a horizontal asymptote at x equals 0, um, or at y equals 0, and a vertical asymptote here um, at x equals 0. So now let's look at what we can do to get multiple asymptotes. So if I take my denominator, and I put a few factors down here. So x minus 3, and we'll multiply that by x plus 2. And then we need to put this whole thing here in parentheses so that we can force it to be in the denominator. There we go. So now when I graph this, I should end up with two vertical asymptotes, one at x equals positive 3 and one at x equals negative 2, because those are the two places where I would be dividing by 0 and have a problem with my graph. So let's see what this looks like. And there they are. I have a vertical asymptote here directing the curves of the graph at negative 2 on the x-axis and at positive 3. But notice that my horizontal asymptote hasn't changed at all. It's still right here um, at 0. Um, one final kind of weird thing that you can do to your graph is if you make the power um, on the variable in the numerator, um, so we'll put, let's say, x, uh, let's do x to the fifth power up here. So if we make this power um, one more, has to be exactly one more, in fact, than the power on the denominator. 
So this will be x to the fifth, and then we'll divide this by x to the fourth, um, let's say minus four. Um, when we click enter, notice now instead of having a horizontal asymptote, now we have a slanted asymptote. If you follow the curve here, see where the slant asymptote is guiding um, the movement of the graph right through here. So um, the more you know you play with these in Geometry Sketchpad, uh, the more aware you'll become of how changes in the function, in the in the parent function for the rational, um, will impact your graph and the location of the vertical, the horizontal, and the slant asymptotes. Um, in the next lesson, we're going to learn about how um, you can find the asymptotes, the vertical, the horizontal, and the slant asymptotes algebraically uh, so that if you don't have a graphing calculator or geometer sketch pad, you can sketch a graph on your own really quickly and easily.